The following is an account of one David Conbike, whose audio recordings have been stitched together for use within the U.S. Court of Law and the Florida Court of Law. Audience members may find the contents of this audio recording concerning and audibly graphic. User discretion is advised. You have been warned. Mic check. Check, check. Hey everyone, what's up? It's your boy David the Gray Beard Con Con back with another live audio blog of the wicked, the wild, and the supernatural. That's right, and today this blog is near and dear to my heart, everyone, as we travel back to the location of a massacre at a summer camp here in the Sunshine State. Now, usually the thoughts of summer camp bring back good memories like making friends, outdoor activities, sports, maybe a little bit of romance, but this camp was a little different. And I can't wait to tell you all about it because it's sure to get that spooky tingle up your spine. But we should be pulling up to it right about, yeah, right here. Wow, this place is run down. Camp Sticky Knee, or Camp Sticky Knee as we like to call it, still has the sign hanging up, but uh, the gate has a padlock on it. Not a big deal though, that won't stop the old con cons. Over the gate we go, wow. <coughs> it is crazy to be back here. Now, let me get you all up to speed on the point of this blog entry as we walk down to the camp. We are going to be spending one night at Old Sticky Knee, just like we have at many places before to see if we can witness any ghostly supernatural activities. Now I'm sure all of you remember our one night stays at the Stanley Hotel and the Sally House, but the one difference between those places and this one is that I had never been to those places before visiting for the blog. But we'll get to that more here in a bit. Wow, there is the old chow hall. I remember eating peanut butter and jellies. Uh, chili dogs. <laughs> One time, this kid Mark, <laughs> he started laughing so hard mid bite that chili came out of his nose. I kid you not, it was hilarious. And there is my old bunkhouse, old bunkhouse three. Yeah, I really don't have much to say about that place. Other than that, we had a guidance counselor named Steve, and uh, he used to stay up with us at night with a flashlight, telling us all ghost stories, but. Yeah, maybe that's why I enjoy all this supernatural stuff so much. I don't know. And this dock. It's... Wow. I really never thought I'd be back here. Anyway. Better get our sleeping bag set up for the night. The sun is starting to go down here. All right, you con cons. We've got the sleeping bag set up in old bunkhouse three. We've got the lantern. We've got... Uh, you guessed it, the marshmallows. Let's head out and see if all those days at camp improved my fire making skills at all. And there we go. And now to enjoy some fireside sugary deliciousness. Mm. Oh my god, that is good. Okay, Con Con, so I know you can't tell, but the sun is no longer visible. And this is when the spirits come out to play. So to keep things in theme with our earlier blogs, I'm going to tell you the history behind Camp Stikini. Now, if you try to look this place up on the web, you'll see that you don't find anything. No mention of this place whatsoever. And they did that on purpose. And who is they, you might ask? Uh, the government, the state of Florida. They're all trying to cover this up, man. But I have a firsthand account of what happened that night. And here tonight, back at Camp Stikini, I am going to let it all be known. It was the summer of 1988. My parents sent me to camp to make friends, which is ridiculous. I had plenty of friends. I think they just wanted me to get out of the house for a week. Wait, my brother was born early the next year. Oh my God, sick! Gross! Anyway, we had just finished a baseball game and I can remember arguing with my friend Kyle if the Broncos were actually going to win a Super Bowl this year when we walked up to the dock. Now picture this beautiful sunrise and we see some of the camp counselors there with a small crowd of kids around them on the dock. And this is when I should tell you about one of the cool things at the camp. There were these fish at the dock. You could literally dangle fish over and like slap the water and these giant tarpons would come up and grab it out of your hand. It was amazing and also scary. A crazy rush. It was, I, I, I don't know, you just have to try it for yourself. There's still places out there that do this stuff. But this time, the counselors weren't dangling fish. They had a fishing rod. 
Now all the kids were hooting and hollering as the two counselors kept casting these rods out at the fish, but they weren't using any baits. They were just casting these giant treble hooks at the tarpon, trying to snag them and reel them in. I pushed forward to the front of the kids and I yelled at them. I said, Steve, stop, you're going to hurt them. But he just said, you know, quiet down, pipsqueak, don't get your panties in a bunch. And then he cast it out again. One of the kids in the circle said that they'd each snagged the big one a few times, but the line kept breaking. So they were trying to hook it at the same time so that they could finally bring it in. And I know what you might be thinking, Concons. Why would the fish stick around when they were clearly being fished for? Well, if you take it from me, it's just, they just didn't get it. They had been fed so many times by these kids throughout the summers that they had been conditioned to hearing that splash and coming up to the dock for food. They're just like a bunch of dogs. They were excited to hear that sound of the food hitting their bowl, except this time it just wasn't that. Finally, counselor Steve hooked into the big tarpon again, this time right in the head. He yelled out to the other counselor to hurry and hook it as well, and as luck would have it, Concons, he managed to snag it right in the head as well. I remember punching Steve in the arm as they reeled that fish in. I watched it flail and squirm trying to get away. Blood just gushed where the hooks dug into its face and its eyes turned red and bloodshot. But the two of them together just kept pulling it along the edge of the dock to the bank and then scooped it up onto the land. The kids cheered as Steve and the other counselor pinned it down. And cutting the line where the hooks were caught in, they raised the fish up and yelled, We got him! We got the monster of Camp Steakity! One of the kids brought out their Kodak camera and shot some photos while I pleaded for Steve to release it. But I knew it was too late. The skin on the fish dried and cracked like dried mud on a barren lake, and it just laid there in their hands, just lifeless, its eyes just staring out into nothingness. They tried to take the hooks out at that point, but the barbs on the hooks were just too big, and they gave up quickly trying to remove them, so they just threw it back into the water. And I can still remember that giant fish floating on the water, the hooks still pierced in its body. All he wanted was food. Think how many campers had fed that guy throughout the years to get to that size. Now he was just dead. I could hardly eat anything that night, Concons. It just hit me really hard, you know? I just don't get people who just kill fish just to kill them. I laid there in my bunk that night, thinking of that fish, when we heard this strange sound from the shower house in front of the bunks. It was a loud gurgling, murmuring. Like the sound someone would make trying to scream with their mouth sewn shut. We knew all the counselors took showers once we were all in bed, and Steve wasn't in his bunk, so me, Kyle, and Mark got up to see what was going on. The sound continued over the noise of the shower with lasting water as we pushed open the shower house door and peeked behind the privacy wall. It was just red, Goncons. The floor was wet with blood. The drains on the floor were like small whirlpools of red water just draining down the blood of Steve and the other camp counselors. Just hanging there from the shower house ceiling. Giant hooks, they were just right underneath their jaws. They came out their mouths. Their eyes were just bloodshot. Man. The showers still hitting their body with water, but only blood was going to the floor. They just swung there, trembling muscle spasms, their eyes just staring off as they muttered garbled speech da -da, over and over again. We didn't know what to do, man. We ran out of the shower house and back to our bunk, but that's when we heard it. The sound of swinging, creaking from the rafters, supporting the weight. The floor was sticky. It made a small splash like stepping in a puddle when we entered into the bunkhouse. I raised up my flashlight. There were hooks, hundreds of them, dangling from the ceiling. That's where they were, you guys. It was the other campers, dangling by their feet, their eyes bloodshot and lifeless with hooks through their necks. Others were hung up like Steve and the counselors, and some of them had hooks driven through their upper part of their mouths coming out their nose. Blood dripped down their bodies under the floor, creating a red puddle that reflected the light of my flashlight. And that's when we saw it. It was a fin. In unison, the lifeless, hanging campers muttered out, da ta da ta It headed towards us through the blood, 
slowly at first then it picked up speed and i yelled at mark and kyle go get out but mark just stood there man shocked what he was seeing kyle opened the screen door and ran outside and i followed but i could hear it i could hear the splash of the fish jumping the thud of mark's body hitting the wall i ran con con i didn't want to hear anymore we just ran down the drive of the camp and we could hear it the jingle of metal hitting metal like keys on a key ring hooks hitting hooks as they swung back and forth i didn't want to look back i couldn't i just kept running as the light from my flashlight pointed up the sky and back down to the ground in the motion of my swinging arms i yelled out to kyle keep running don't stop but as he looked back at me i saw the hook i tried to tell him con con i tried to yell kyle look at but it was too late the hook drove in just underneath his jaw and his feet jutted forward and then backwards as the hook and the line went taut with his momentum. I looked back just for a moment and I saw him looking at me through his bloodshot eyes, his body shaking involuntarily. So he tried to say something to me but all I could hear was da 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 as blood bubbled out of his mouth dripping down his chin. I turned and ran dodging hooks as I went and finally I reached the camp gate the hooks stopped appearing the wind just rustled through the forest trees but I could still hear it the sound almost like a horrific wind shot high in pitch as a deep moan filled the night it rang in my ears and I repeated over and over again as I closed my eyes and screamed, running down the road until I stopped and opened my eyes. It was a truck. Now, I'm sure the sight of a barefoot kid covered in blood scared that farmer nearly as much as I was, but he picked me up and drove me into town so I could use the payphone to call my parents. It's been 40 years since then, ConCons, and through the love of my family and a lot of therapy sessions, I'm back. And the fact is, the authorities didn't find anything. The entire camp, minus myself, <sighs> vanished without any proof of what happened. And the only story being mine about a ghost fish that hooked people to death, families eventually gave up searching or paid private detectives till they ran out of money. But now you know why I'm here. To get proof of what happened here. To give those families, to give myself closure. And it's just about time. All we need to do now is make a little offering. Mm. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, okay. That hurt a lot more than I thought it would. <clears throat> just going to leave a little bit of blood here on the bunkhouse floor. <clears throat> and... Ooh. Well, I imagine this might take a little bit. But, couldn't take too long. That that noise it's oh god what am i doing here this is stupid okay the blood on the floor is moving now i can see it 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 looks like yes it's a black fin followed there's mist and it's coming out of the uh, i haven't looked him in the eye since that day back at camp but my heart is beating out of my chest the hooks i just feel the, the, the terror the terror family game on